All right, hello. Today I have something exciting and a little bit unusual to announce, and I'm coming to you in a much more informal way. Um, but while I am working, um, while I'm making this announcement, I'm going to be working on this cute little quilted tea cozy that I, tea cozy, just cozy, cozy that I'm making for this beautiful jug bottle thing, which I will talk about in a minute. But, dang it, never mind. So I bought this bottle because um, I'm the sort of person who can't survive without water. I just, I carry water with me all the time and I, I just need to have water with me all the time. Um, but it was starting to bother me a little bit because when I was out, we're just at home wearing history bounding gear and carrying around this very modern sort of ugly shiny metal bottle I felt like it threw off the whole vibe so I decided I was going to find a bottle that better fit the aesthetic so I went on Etsy and I was actually looking for one of those leather pouch bottles but I saw this and I just had to have it <laughs> so I bought it like I mentioned before but this is from an Etsy shop called Fired Figment. It is absolutely beautiful quality and I actually got it for a really good price because it was a second sale. Um, there's a, like a little bit of bubbling in the glaze right here. I know you can't see it, but right where the... It lines right up with this little handle thing, but it's totally fine. It's totally like safe to drink out of because you're never going to put your mouth there anyway. And honestly, like... Even with the, the flaw, I would have paid full price for this if it had been asked. Though, I am, if I'm being honest, I am grateful that I got it at a discount because I might not have been able to afford it otherwise. So, I'm very happy to have it. But, the reason I'm making the cozy is because I am very rough on my water bottles. Like, so, so rough. I don't have any water bottle here to show you, but they are dented and the paint's chipped off and one I managed to drop in just the perfect way where it like dented in the whole top so it's still usable but it's like like half inch shorter now. You can be rough with metal water bottles and they'll be fine, but this not so much. It is very sturdy and quite thick and so I'm, I'm sure it will survive a couple of tumbles, but I would rather keep it safe and I plan on taking this hiking, so I know that I'm just going to bang it into everything and probably chip the glaze pretty quick. So, I am making this cozy to keep it safe and, and warm and, <laughs> and to make it last longer and just keep it looking nice longer. It's also going to get a new band, a new strap. This is very nice. I will reuse it in some way, but um, I'm wanting something that's a little bit shorter and a little bit thicker just because this isn't very ergonomic. I'm guessing this will probably be about seven pounds when it's full. And carrying that much amount of weight on a long hike on a strap this thick is gonna really start hurting after not too long at all. So it's getting a bit of a makeover. But the reason for all of the, the jug cozy things is as I think I mentioned, this is the first project in a series of projects that I'm going to be working over the next three or four months. That project is, I am making a historically inspired hiking kit based for the most part on the 18th century. I'm drawing a lot of my information from um, kit that was used during the Revolutionary War and actually a lot of my resources have been uh, reenactors. Um, they're, they're a great source of information. But I want to emphasize this is not period accurate whatsoever. This is very much um, history bound me. I'm, I'm going to be combining 18th century with modern, probably 18th century with bits and pieces of other decades or even centuries. You know what I mean. Um, so this is, this is not like a guide for what they would have, have carried. Um, there's lots of other people on YouTube that can give you more accurate information about what historical people actually would have carried. So this project is motivated by a couple of factors. In large part it is motivated by aesthetics. I'm just really not a huge fan of 
modern outdooring gear, um, like the look of it, it's obviously very useful, very practical. Um, but call me shallow if you want, but I am very motivated by aesthetics. Like if I am using something that I enjoy looking at while I use, I'm much more likely to go and use that thing. And as someone who historic, historically, in, in my past, hasn't really enjoyed hiking, um, I am trying to make this a more enjoyable experience by putting a lot of love and attention into what I carry and the gear that I use. So I'm looking to find a nice balance between aesthetics and practicality, I guess. And the practicality isn't necessarily all on the modern side. People back then knew what they were doing. <laughs> they didn't have access to a lot of the conveniences that we do, but they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Another reason that I want to do this is I want to get a small taste of what these outdooring situations would have been like for people in antiquity. Can I use that term for the 18th century? <laughs> I, I want to understand, at least in a portion, what what it was like to use this gear, to have maybe slightly more primitive gear, um, because I really do feel like you can't really fully understand what life was like or what experiences were like back in ye olden days until you have experienced it a little bit for yourself. I was watching a video by... Um, Abby Cox the other day and she was talking about wearing stays or just wearing 18th century clothing like for years and talking about how yeah you really don't understand all the nuances of these garments until you wear them day in and day out and I thoroughly believe that it's this way for like any sort of gear they would have used as well so again I'm not completely departing from modern conveniences, not at all, but I, I want to, at least in a measure, understand what it might have been like to go out into the wilderness and use these things. <laughs> the last thing I feel like I should note is this is for day hiking, this kit. Um, backpacking and overnight camping is an entirely different, much more complicated beast that I really have no interest in tackling at all. <laughs> um, I am not a camper sort of person, so yeah, d yeah, day, day hiking is going to be where it stops. So some of the larger projects in this series are going to be making a historically based backpack based on the knapsacks that um, soldiers and or like trappers and such used back in the 18th century. Um, and also a pair of stays. Now, I'm not sure how much I'm going to document of the actual making of the pair of stays. This will depend a lot on how much I modified the pair of stays from a traditional pattern. And what I mean by that is if I feel that I need to make modifications and like create a set of specific hiking stays. If I find that I can hike very comfortably in my everyday stays, which I'm honestly hoping that I will, um, I'm not going to document the stay making process because there's lots and lots and lots of videos here on YouTube about people making stays and I think that's great but um, I don't really feel the need to add to that pile of videos when there's a lot of other more original videos that I'm more interested in putting my time and effort into. The backpack will get probably a pretty long and in-depth video though. Another large chunk of this project will be focused on testing my kit um, as I assemble it and or make it. Because not everything in this kit is going to get made. Um, some of it I will source. My family is planning several hiking trips over the next few months um, in which I will test and make update videos and all of this will culminate in June when we are taking a 
I think it's five or six day trip to Mount Rainier National Park. And the reason we're taking this trip to Mount Rainier National Park is um, it's always been a dream of my mom's to hike the Wonderland Trail. The Wonderland Trail is a approximately 93 mile loop or 150-ish kilometers around the base of Mount Rainier. Now, it takes about 10 days for backpackers to hike this, um, and the permitting, per the permitting process to get it is pretty rigorous and quite difficult because it's done by lottery. So we were briefly thinking about doing it that way, but none of us have ever, ever done any real backpacking before, so we decided it'd probably be pretty stupid to attempt something this intensive for like the first go. So instead we're just going to day hike for six days. That being said, it's still gonna be pretty intensive. We're just not going to obviously hike the whole thing and we're not going to be camping. So on this trip in June, that is when my kit is going to have like its final being put through its paces, final test thing, and then the project will be complete. So expect videos about like long-term hiking in stays. I know that uh, there have been some other YouTubers who have made videos about exercising and or hiking and hiking in stays. Um, or I think the one I saw she was hiking in a Victorian corset. I'll have to find that video. It was really interesting. But I haven't seen any videos about endurance exercise in stays, and I have every confidence that I will be fine. But I am really interested to test it out and chronicle the process, especially on like the six day trek. Um, so expect videos about hiking and stays, expect videos about obviously the making of things. It's not just backpack and stays that I will be making, there are other smaller projects that I'll be working on. I might do some recipe videos for making like food that's easy to carry along that is historically based. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. I have at least, I think, five or six videos planned and there'll probably be some random ones that I come up with along the way. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really excited for this process. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. I don't, this is not the sort of sewing I usually do. I do a lot of garment making. I don't do a huge amount of like practical object sewing, but I, I'm expanding my horizons. So in addition to all of the other videos I have planned that are not based on this project, um, that will be coming out as well, keep your eye out for my I don't know what I'm going to call it, like, I guess, history bounding hiking or something like that. That sounds a little clunky, but I, I will have decided on a project name by the time this video is posted. But keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in, and we're going to have a lot of fun.